The most common means of recording original information is through the use of a key punch to punch the data into the cards. This is the keyboard of the key punch. It is similar to a typewriter. This is a typewriter keyboard. Its organization is centered around alphabetic printing. On a key punch, the organization is primarily centered around numerical data. Therefore, this type of keyboard has been designed. The alphabetic characters are only capitals, and looking closer, the upper and lower case is merely the separation among the alphabetical, numerical, and special characters. In this area, all the numerical keys are centered for ease and key punching, yet all the alphabetical characters are located similarly to those on the typewriter. There are 44 keys in all, and one of the main differences in the keyboard is that there are 10 control keys to adjust the punching process. The alphabetical and numerical shift keys are two of the major control keys. The numerical shift has to be in effect when numerical data is punched without the program card and with the star wheels up. When punching in alphabetical, the alphabetical shift has to be in effect. The alphabetical keys are like the lower case on a typewriter, and the numerical corresponds to the upper case. The special characters respond to either upper or lower case, as is shown by their marking on the key. Some keyboards are only numerical. In this case, all data must be coded numerical. On top of the key punch is the card hopper, which can hold about 500 cards. Cards are placed into the hopper with the face forward and the nine edge down. Depressing the feed key feeds the cards from the front of the hopper down to the card bed. The hopper then is the reservoir for the cards and the first step in the punching process. The operator normally feeds two cards first, one after the other. The machine is designed so that when the second card enters the bed, the first card will register at the punching station. The punching then is ready to start at the left end of the card in column one. The second card is on deck ready to be registered at the punching station when the first card is finished and moved on. And here is a simulated side view of the punching station. This is necessary because these blades move so quickly that you couldn't see the action. There are 12 blades, and they are spaced to correspond with the rows on the cards. This is a side view of the card as it's being punched. Here, an A is punched the 12 blade for the zone and the one blade for the digit punch out the appropriate holes. And the little chips of paper, they fall into a container under the machine. This is called a chip box. When punching, registering a new card at the punching station moves the punched card to the reading station. As each column passes by the punching station, the same column of the previous card is lined up at the reading station. As column 32 passes by the punching station, column 32 of the first card is read by 12 reading brushes, one for each row on the card. In the key punch, cards are processed from end to end rather than from edge to edge. The advantage is that a lot of information in columns is repeated from card to card. And when the operator wishes to duplicate a column from the reading station, she presses the duplicating key on the keyboard. And the machine reads the information available at the reading station and punches it into the corresponding column of the card that is lined up at the punching station. However, 
this is not the most efficient method of duplication in large quantities. After the card passes by the reading station, it moves on to the stacker. The card stacker, like the hopper, holds about 500 cards and logically is located at the left end of the machine. Its operation is the exact opposite of the hopper. Instead of feeding the machine, it receives the finished cards and stacks them. The cards are stacked with the nine edge out and face up and remain in the same sequence that they were punched. The primary control of the card punch is the mainline switch. There are two positions for the switch, on and off. When in off, all keys are inactive. This key punch must be warmed up before use so that the electronic tubes will be active. In this instance, it is advised that the mainline switch be turned on a full minute before the machine is used. The release key is used to pass the card along the card bed once punching is finished. When the release key is pushed, the card automatically leaves the punching station and the next card is now ready for punching. The feed key here on the keyboard feeds the cards from the hopper down into the card bed. By depressing the feed key once, the first card is fed into the ready position. When the feed key is pressed again, a second card is fed into this ready position and the first card is moved into the punching station and is registered. If the operator wishes to do a number of cards, she may flip this switch at the top of the keyboard called the automatic feed. From this time on, the cards will automatically feed as each previous card is released. This key is called the register key. When it is pressed, the card moves along the card bed from the on deck position behind the card lever pressure finger and actually registers itself behind the punching station. The register key is generally only used when a single card is being processed. When the cards are being punched, one after another, the cards are then automatically registered as they are fed along the card bed. This is the print switch. When in on position, the machine will print the characters that are punched. They are printed along the top of the card, directly over the column where the punch holes are made. To pass over a column without punching holes, the spacebar is used. Just as the typewriter's spacebar moves the carriage without typing, so the space bar on the key punch moves the card, one column at a time without punching. The duplicating key is the key pressed when the operator wants to duplicate the punching from the reading station as it coincides with the same column at the punching station. It activates the reading station and combines it with the punching station. In other words, it is possible to duplicate complete cards one after another by pressing this key. 
Later, we will see that there is an even more efficient method of duplicating large numbers of cards. Here is Louise Martin's card. It is divided into fields. We are ready to punch in the data about her. In this case, we are punching without a program card. First, the card code. It is the first card made on her, so the code is number one. We register the card at the punching station. And would punch numeric. One. Next, the student number. Her number is 65 in a five-column field. Therefore, in numeric, we punch 0, 0, 0, 065. Her surname, Martin, is alphabetical, but can be punched without using the alpha key. And then we skip over to her first name field and punch Louise and skip to the next field. In alphabetic, the code letter F would be punched in the sex field. The alpha key on most machines doesn't have to be pressed when punching in alphabetical only. Her class is 11A52, and it is punched, remembering the shift, numeric 11A numeric 52. The age is numeric 1, 6 in the age field, her phone number is 2345678. Numeric. And then the seven digits are punched consecutively. A dash or comma is not punched. Louise lives at 168 Champlain Avenue. In numeric, 168 is punched. And then without shift, the name of the street. The clear switch will clear the card through all stations. And here is the finished card. All information is punched and it's printed along the 12 edge. So Louise's statistics are recorded into the card ready to be recalled at any time.